Champion buffs, champion buffs, champion buffs. I think a lot of us know by now that it's going to be Ebony Moore as being one of three champions that are being buffed for June. But what's going to change? What are the abilities, stuff, so that kind of thing? And will it benefit you if you are going to be interested in using, acquiring, and as well ranking up Ebony Moore? That's what we're going to dissect in this video. Now, as per usual with most of these things, we've got this big load of uh, white text but luckily what i've done is is for this I've, I've put down some bullet points some info which i actually got from straight from kabam funnily enough that we can just kind of like dissect and have a look at because you might be going at this like, as i am just going like oh can we just have some bullet point infos of change because it's just like going oh the mechanics and i'm like oh right this and that and it's this and that and you left this just going like what's actually been changed so yeah, Kabam very kindly have put together something which is just as simple as this. This kind of like gives you info of the changes being made. So first of all, base uh, attack is going to be 2583 for a 565. To kind of put that in perspective, I don't know 100% if that is a, a decent improvement, especially because I don't have a 565 version to compare that off, but I can imagine that is somewhat of an improvement. And if we go back to the old spotlight, we can see that indeed there is an improvement here with health being 26,826, attack being 2,189. So it's definitely an improvement on the attack rating. You see, I did a little bit of due diligence and research to kind of give you that info. I definitely get my Scooby snack tonight. But each degen is 129% of modified attack rating. Okay, cool. I guess that's something of an improvement. Black, Black Tongue is plus 40% attack, so that seems like a big whoosh, uh, kind of hike up. The Strife Synergy is a plus 15% attack. Again, good. These It depends where you want to put the Synergy in with this champion. Each degen is 5,164.5 damage over 4 seconds, 2 ticks uh, per second as well. And the SP2 is 3 hits, 3 degens, and can get up to a total of 15,493.5 damage. Okay, cool. But during Falter, inf inflicts six additional degens for a total of 46,480.5 damage. Total damage per tick is uh, 5,810. I'm liking what I'm hearing. But again, as I always said, like a lot of this is down to when it all goes live, whether or not you'll be interested in this champion full stop. I'm not saying I dislike him anymore. I definitely feel that from the last month, especially with the event and taking this against Shang-Chi as being a cheesy champion, that this could be a interesting addition to players' rosters to a point of going like, it could be a, could be a main team champion, especially if you're looking for unavoidable damage in uh, circumstances of doing things like act content or doing monthly content or doing special events content. Yeah, you name it, this could be really good and could be well used, which is something I think a lot of us would like to see, especially from this champion, especially because a lot of people have got him, like myself, as a six star. Base stats, HP increased by plus seven percent. I mean it's already quite high with with the percent with, with the, the volume. I mean at the moment, especially from what we've seen with the um the info here. And again maybe that I've got this wrong from the spotlight. I thought this was the most updated one, but maybe like twenty six thousand eight hundred and twenty six. Uh, if there's more help on that, like, okay, that's that's not too bad. So yeah, pretty pretty good so far with this. But there's a few other things as well, like we've got the physical resistance increased by plus 15%, attack increased by plus 8%, so that's, I think that's basically kind of explaining the, this this here uh, on the info side of things. And that's that's all well and good, and I'm, as I said, I'm really interested in this. War Machine interests me the most so far, but a really strong Mystic, if this champion can be it, is going to be vitally important. I think Kabam are looking to really ramp up certain champions, and this seems like a ramp up. I think this champion as well is like the... It's going to be tipped to be the anti-Corvus Glaive, in a sense that it's kind of a champion that rather than it's doing, say, with Corvus, it's a parry heavy attack for uh, for going against the Vey champions or it's defeating certain champions it's like this one is similar but except like rather than being raw damage through the means of crit it's going to be raw damage or well not raw damage but kind of debuff damage through the medium of degen and that's going to be the thing as it says these missions are key to every more dealing some massive damage make sure to complete them or uh, every chance um, you get so that's like you got to do that 
So doing these missions here, nullify a buff with uh, from the opponent, inflict a power steal effect, cause the opponent to miss. And then, um, yeah, I mean, the champion is persistent from fight to fight, if I remember the two way to, well, not persistent, well, not that it probably advertises it being persistent, but it's definitely like a fight to fight champion. So yeah, um, complete the mission. This also means that like it's imperative to, to kind of have a falter on and that's the thing, you know, that's going to be the, the main way to get a ton of degeneration damage as uh, the dev says there. So there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done in order to kind of understand the champion. As it's not one that I've been greatly interested in, it's definitely something that I'm going to have to like look into a bit more. And signature ability, when the opponent misses an attack, they're inflicted with a passive degeneration, dealing um, X amount of damage over one second. A very potent champion when he's, uh, when he's awakened. And I'm sure that with these new changes, that uh, from a defensive and offensive point of view, you may even start seeing a lot more of this champion. I'm sure there's people out there that have this champion as defensive options, and that's going to be really cool because you're going to be ready already to uh, to do this. So that's fantastic. There is going to be some info we need to look over right now, which again boils down to the kit changes. Again, this is from Kabam uh, directly, so this kind of gives you more of a perspective on things when it comes to you know, well the. The big changes, because like we've seen the little changes, but what are the big changes? So mission degen damage increased significantly and changed to base attack only to 320% base attack from 30% modified attack. Persistent charges changed to gain one per fight up to a max of four, previously five per fight. Right, so that's the the thing here, and it's got a max of 20. Wow, okay. But I guess that's the thing, isn't it? That like you've got to you've got to ramp up over various fights. So I guess, again, it's like it's down to perfectly choosing a champion for whatever need, reason, and desire, whether or not it's monthly content, whether or not it's act content as well. Each PV now grants the benefit of the previous resource deterioration, and that mechanic has been removed completely. Uh, minus fury potency down, or fury and potency down, each PV now increases degen duration by 10%, max 40% increase. This is a new mechanic. Okay, all right, got to work around that. Focus time changed to seven, per seven seconds from five seconds. However, now focusing also reduces ability power rate by 50%. <laughs> RIP Terex starting with power. So yeah, that's, that's cool. That means that this could be a viable champion for power control suppression. So yeah, great. Happy to learn about that. And then time to persuade increased from 0 0.6 seconds. Sorry, increased? Yeah, 0 0.6 from 0 0.5. Okay. Black Tongue now grants an additional plus 40% attack rating. Again, we cover that. And while Black Tongue is active, now inflicts a full to debuff every 15 seconds. This is a new mechanic. Okay. So I don't know if this is going to make it more of an annoying defender. So if there's any fights you have to do against Ebony Moore, do them now, I'd say, before it just gets like quite annoying. So if there's any like end game content you have to do, where you got to face off against, do it now before it causes a frustration. SP2 degen is now inflicted on each hit, three total, rather than one, uh, rather than only once, and its damage is increased by 129% modified attack from 30% modified attack. I guess that kind of plays into if you time it off right with Falter and you time it off right with where black tongue lies into this uh, whether or not that's kind of uh that's the modified attack I, I can imagine that's where a lot of the huge damage is coming from sp2 now inflicts two additional degens if the opponent is faulted again that plays into the narrative of uh more ramp up more damage more modified more spankability when it comes to uh debuff damage so the degen is going to be nice if falter lasts uh, for the whole sp2 and uh, this is a new mechanic okay sp2 last na uh, last hit now refreshes any fault debuffs on the opponent. This is a new mechanic, and if timed right, can usually result in high degen damage followed by falter. Uh, the opponent follows uh, follow up special attack. Okay, cool. So that's again. This all plays into the narrative of are we doing are we doing like SP two for doing like the great amount of damage? That's an easier rotation. That's a cooler rotation, and that hopefully will be a more potent uh, rotation. SP three. Still, uh, still, now, uh, power still now steals 40% of the opponent's power, previously 35%. Okay, well, that's just a small change. And again, if you're looking for options to steal power, SP3 is the way to go. The Hyperion suppression is 
on. And as well, if you're gonna like time it well, you know, building champions up to their SP3s, or kind of say the enemies on SP3, maybe as well, even in circumstances of all or nothing, this can be a vital option to do situations like that. And then on the signature ability front, while the opponent is faulted, reduce auto block Archangel uh, by minus 100%. I don't know if that's, they're referring to that, how that plays into it, how, um, how faulted reduces auto block just substantially. Again, up to plus 40% ability power rate. Power gained outside hit and structs uh, such as a power steal on heavy or SP3. This is a new mechanic. Okay, that needs something. I think I need more kind of, I need testing. I need to test that out. Do bear in mind, these are things that are subject to change, first and foremost. But um, yeah, it's definitely really cool to see a lot of changes and narrative change to the champion from a damage perspective. Those degen damage sound, sound like amazing, especially if we go by this info right here about it could reach, you know, ticks of 5,810, 46,480 damage over what, like several seconds. It's going to be nice. It's going to be definitely spicy. The spiciest degen damage there. And, but the biggest thing is like, well, how, how will the persistence feel? How would it feel fight to fight fighting this champion? Will you be interested? But is it still going to like hit like a, a wet noodle for the point of, uh, like the, the, the build-up phase, is it going to be frustrating in any kind of way? Those are key key questions, key tests that need to be done before I consider even ranking up the champion. But that's what's going to be dropping for Ebony Moore. Thank you very much for watching this video and make sure to hit the like button, share it with, with somebody else if you want to. It's up to you. Thank you so much. Make sure to check out some other content that's posted in and around that vicinity there. Appreciate ya. Much love. And check out the other buff champions for June videos dropping um in and around this video so thanks see you soon bye, -bye.